All right. Okay, everyone can see the agenda. All right. Okay, so uh, thanks for joining us at um, another automation hour. Um, so our agenda is to just quickly review the upcoming webinars, um, our sponsor and your co-host, and um, introduce today's presenter, um, MVP Doug Ayers, and um, then we'll wrap up with questions and answers. So um, going into the rest of November for next week, we have Benjamin Bolipu, and um, the following Friday, we have MVP Melissa Van Dyke and Taylor Grimes. And for December, uh, we'll have two sessions with MVP Mike Gill and Megan Brodsky. Um, and as we're heading into um, 2017, we'll start adding additional sessions. So um, if you do have a cool um, process automation use case, what all different levels, whether it's beginner, intermediate, advanced, um, do submit them um, for our consideration of being a guest presenter at a future um, webinar. So you can submit that at um, Salesforce Automation Hour um, and the contact us section. So for logistics, um, if this is your first time, all lines are muted. Um, use the chat function to ask questions, and then towards the end of the presentation, we'll go through um, the questions in the queue. Um, there's also questions that you can post on our success community, Salesforce Automation Hour, and uh, we will be recording this, and we'll post it um, after the session. And also go to our website, salesforceautomationhour.com um, for upcoming um, links to upcoming webinars to register for as well. So here's our sponsor, Concrete IO, and your co-hosts, Raquel, uh, Jen, and David. So um, with that, let me switch over to um, hand over controls to our guest presenter. So we're excited to have um, Doug here. He is our first guest presenter in the series. Um, he, and I'm especially excited because he is um, a class, um, MVP Summer 16 classmate of mine. So um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Doug to do his presentation. Awesome. Thanks, Jennifer. I'm very excited to be a part of Automation Hour. Thanks for having me. Again, my name is Doug Ayers, and I'm currently a senior developer at Gear CRM, or Salesforce Consultancy and Implementation Partner. Um, in addition to being a Salesforce MVP this year, I also lead the Nashville Developer Group. I hold uh, eight certifications as I pursue the technical architect journey. I write on my website at douglassierras.com about various Salesforce solutions I'm working on. You can follow me on Twitter. I also have some Salesforce code-related projects up on GitHub. Starting to dabble in video tutorials. You can find that on my YouTube channel. And also find some previous presentations that have done the slides on slideshare.net. Enough about me. What we're going to be talking about today, we're going to walk through this business use case. We have Lauren Boyle, the sales ops manager at Universal Containers, and she wants to make her reps more productive by automating manual steps the team has to make on every lead. Lauren requests that when a sales rep logs an activity on a new lead, then update the lead status from open to working contacted. Lauren asks you, her favorite awesome admin, to help implement a solution. As the awesome admin, we're going to look in our Salesforce toolbox to see what automation options we have and which is a best fit for this solution. We'll look at Apex triggers, workflow rules, process builder, and flow. Now normally I'm not a code first um, administrator or developer, but let's talk about Apex Trigger. Although it is doable, 
for what seems like a standard field update, this is a bit more of an investment and effort than is necessary. And the code that we're looking at isn't all the code that we need. We also would have to write our unit tests, which is even more code. So code, code, lots of code. We're going to rule this out for now. There's got to be an easier option. Workflow rules, tried and true for many, many years. Unfortunately, um, a field update for the task object doesn't support cross-object field updates. Sometimes you can see that you can do a cross-object field update if there's a master detail relationship, but we don't have that here with tasks. So we'll have to rule this option out. Process Builder. Aha. Process Builder does allow us to perform cross-object field updates. It's not limited to master detail fields. It will work with lookup fields. So we'll consider Process Builder as an option for building out our solution. Flow, of course. Flow, a very powerful uh, declarative automation tool. It has a record update element, which can perform field updates on nearly any object. All we need to know is the ID of the record to make the change to. So we'll walk through this one as well. Okay, so for today, we are going to walk through implementing two different solutions. One, which will use Process Builder only, and then solution two, we will implement that logic within Flow with just enough of Process Builder to invoke our Flow. At a high level, our process is going to run whenever the task is created or edited. And then we want to see when it is being marked completed, so the user has logged an activity. And then we're going to see if it was related to a lead, then we'll perform some update action on the lead record. And if it was related to a contact, we'll do something else. Now, of course, in our business requirement, Lauren didn't ask anything about contacts, but for demonstrating what's possible, we'll walk through and set that up today. When we get to flow, we'll do something very similar. We will have our decision element, and it's going to look to see who is the task related to. And if it's a lead, then we'll follow that outcome to perform a record update. And if it's related to a contact, we'll do something else. Now, while we have these two screenshots up, I'd like to point out that the flow decision, we have this one element here, it is essentially the same thing, this one decision block, as the vertical set of decisions in your process builder. They're just visualized differently. For example, in flow, when you set up a decision, you define one or more outcomes, and then you route to do different actions. And it's visualized this way with the arrows. But with Process Builder, each of your decision outcomes is represented as a blue diamond, and you follow the route based on the true path. But underneath the sheets, what's going on in the platform is essentially the same thing. So just want to connect the dots there. Before we get started, we need to talk about how do tasks relate to other objects. Tasks have two special fields, and each of these fields are lookups to multiple objects. The name field, also known as the who ID, can relate to leads or contacts. The related to field, also known as the what ID, can be related to accounts, con uh, contracts, opportunities, other standard objects, as well as custom objects that support the allow activities option. In contrast to traditional lookup fields, a standard lookup field can only hold ID values that all relate back to the same object type. For example, if we created an account lookup field, it could only ever hold values of other account records. However, with tasks, these special who and what ID lookup fields, they're a bit more dynamic. So the who ID can hold not only lead ID values, but it can also hold contact ID values. In that sense, it's 
more acting like a text field that can hold a lot of different things. And therefore, it is non-deterministic to who or to what any given task record would be related. However, we can use the three character object key prefix of the ID to know which object a particular task is being related to at a, that time. So in this image that we see in the bottom right, in red is the key prefix. And here we see 0, 0, 1. This just happens to be the object key prefix for the account object. So this means if we had a task whose what ID had this value, just by looking at the first three letters, we would know that that task is related to an account, not to an opportunity. This will be important as we build out our solution later with the decisions. Okay, Astro says, let's get to the demo. Enough talky talky. So let's do just that. So I'm here in my Winter 17 developer org. The first thing we want to do is we're going to come and implement solution one with Process Builder. Start our new process. We'll call this something ingenious like solution one. This will update lead or contact when an activity logged. And you know, this is where we'll put that practice description here. Your future self will thank you. Your coworkers will thank you. Make sure to put something there. And this is going to run whenever a record changes. We'll start our process with the task object. Okay? And whenever the record is created or updated, such that we can monitor when the task is created as a completed activity or if it later gets updated to be a completed activity. And the first decision we want to know, is this completed for a lead? Okay. Now, to know whether the task is completed, we could do this a couple ways. One, we might start by looking at the status pick list field. Okay. Pretty straightforward uh, option to choose. But then here in our criteria, we may need to look at specific pick list values because more than one might indicate that the task is completed. But I don't really want to keep up with all the different pick list values that our administrator may set up that mean that the task is completed, especially if we have multiple record types. So there's a simpler way. Instead of looking at the status, we'll look at the task closed field. And this is a Boolean value checkbox and it will tell us true if the status that's been chosen indicates the task is completed. This is very similar to um, determining if a case is closed or looking at if the opportunity is closed. We can also look at is the task closed. The next thing we need to look at is what or who is this task related to. Remember our conversation about the object key prefix. So we'll look at the name ID in the who ID value. We're going to look at the first three characters. So we're going to see does this who ID start with, and I just happen to know that for leads, its object key prefix is 0, 0, Q. So if this is true, then we're completing a task for the lead. Let's go ahead and set up our next criteria. Are we completing? for a contact. We would say, is the task closed? Choose, set that to true. And then we need to look at the name prefix, name ID prefix for contact. So we'll start with that who ID starts with, and the first three characters for contacts just happen to know is 003. Click save. Now, for these, we can do whatever action we want to do. So here, we want to update the lead. So we'll choose the update records action. We're going to say update lead status. We're going to choose a record that's related to the lead. Now, this is the fun part. <laughs> As of Wednesday this week, Salesforce released the Winter 17 Patch 12. And it introduced um, a very cool feature that we're going to use today. But 
had they not released this new feature, I was about to have to walk you through um, a story based on my original blog post for my original intent for this webinar around having to create custom lookup fields and a lot of other fun stuff. But as of Wednesday, we no longer have to do all that. On the update action for a record related to the task, when we say we want to do our name ID, so the process builder gives us an optimistic look at, well, what object do we think the task is related to? And so in our scenario, we know that based on our decision, we're working with a lead ID. So we're going to choose the path to say we're going to update a lead. And by choosing the name ID lead field, Salesforce is going to conveniently prompt fields here for our field updates that belong to the lead object. Now, if we were to come down this path and it not be related to a lead, um, it will either throw an error or behind the scenes it just won't update any records because if you didn't have a lead ID, it wouldn't update a lead. But here, we know we're going to come down the happy path, so we're going to choose the lead status field to change to be working contacted. Now, in our business requirements, we didn't want to always change the status to working contacted. We only wanted to do that for leads whose status was open. So we'll add a criteria here to the update records action. Say so start when the status is open. Okay, so we're going to update the lead status if it's open to working contacted. Click save, and this action will only run if the task is related to a lead and it's being marked completed. And we'll do some action here for contacts just to show that we can do multiple things. So I'll just update the contact. Now I don't have a status or anything fun to do with the contact here, so we'll probably just update the contacts uh, description just to show that we did come through here and update it. So we'll change the description. We'll say hello from solution one. Save. Okay, so we'll activate our process come over to our lead here, and we see that its current status is open, not contacted. And if I come over and I log a call, click save, we can see our status automatically switch to working contacted. That's a great uh, automation feature for our reps. They don't have to go in and update other fields since they were always going to have to do this. We don't have to worry about people forgetting to do it. So, very cool here. Now, what if we did this on a contact? Okay, We've got a contact, our description field is blank. Let's go ahead and log our activity. And boom, there we go. Hello from solution one. And so there we go with our process, able to do different actions, routing based on who or what the lead is re related to. Now, Let's walk through, we're going to deactivate this, and we're going to build out solution two using just flow. So we'll go back to setup. I'll pull up flow. Create a new flow. Now, since we want to, in this example, do all of the logic within here, one of the things that we're going to need process builder to pass to our flow is the task record. So the first thing I want to set up is my S object input variable. So we come over to the resources tab, choose S object variable. Now I like to prefix my variables with VAR, short for variable, and then we'll call that our task. Change the input type to input only, and then choose task as our object. Okay. And now that we've created our variable, we'll see that show up under the Explorer tab. Now we need to add some elements to our flow. So we'll change over to palette. We're going to drag our decision over. And this is where we're going to check to see related to who. Who is this task related to? For our outcomes, the different paths we could take, we'll have one if it's related to a lead. And how we know it's related to the lead is we're going to inspect 
the tasks who ID field. Just like we did with Process Builder, and going back to our object key prefix conversation, we're going to check to see if the who ID starts with the value for leads, which is 00Q. We'll also come and have another outcome. What if it's related to a contact? And we'll look at the who ID starts with, for contacts, that is 003. Great. Click OK. What do we want to do for leads? We're going to have a simple update action. Update our lead. Choose the lead object. And what's the criteria? Which leads do we want to update? Well, we want to update the leads whose ID equals the who ID on our task. In addition, we only want to update the leads where their status equals the open value. And then the field we want to perform an update on is to change the status field to the working contacted pick list value. Cool. And then from the decision, we would route the path over here, which path the lead outcome. And then for the contact, we could do another record update. And we'll update our contact. What record? The contact object, where the contact's ID equals the who ID on our task. And the field to update will be very boring here. And just update the description again. Hello from solution two. And then we'll route our outcome here and over. Okay. Now, we're not limited to just doing the record updates. With either Process Builder or Flow, we could do all sorts of things. Maybe for some objects, we need to uh, send email alerts or post to chatter. Maybe you have something fairly complicated and you need to call a subflow or some other fun thing like that. Now we need to mark the decision as our start element. And then we can save our flow. And this will be update uh, task related flow. Sounds fun. Solution to update task related flow. This is your best practice description again. And we'll click OK. We'll close out of here, activate our flow so that it will be available to choose from in Process Builder. Now let's navigate back to Process Builder. We'll create our thin process here for solution two. Launch flow and task completed. When our record changes, uh, don't make Generate for sad by leaving this blank. Save. Again, this is also going to run for the task object whenever it is created or edited. Now, as you may have noticed, in our flow, I never did check anything about the task itself other than who it was related to. So the flow, anytime it gets launched, it will try and perform those updates on any other related records for the lead or the contact. And I did that on purpose. I didn't want in my flow for my decisions to have to, for each outcome, um, check to see, is this task being completed? Is this task being completed? I could have, depending on what all our requirements are, but since all of our actions for that flow only need to occur when the task is completed. Rather than repeat that criteria, um, I want to follow more of a dry principle. Don't repeat myself. So I'm going to add that criteria here once within the controlling process. And so we can just say, is this task completed? And we'll look at that closed field. And if that's true, not just every time it's true, but perhaps only when it is becoming completed for the first time. 
Then we'll add our action to launch our flow. Choose our flow, and we need to tell our flow what task we're working with. So we'll choose our input variable. And what is we going to pass? We're going to select the task record that started our process. We'll save this. And then we'll activate our process builder. Now we'll come back and let's reset our lead here, change its status back to open. Okay. And we will log our call. And we'll see that our flow also was able to change our lead status to working contacted. What about if we're updating our contact? At the moment, the description is solution one. But if we log a call, we'll see that the flow is able to update it to be hello from solution two. Awesome possum. Okay, so a recap here. We saw that just like you could do with standard lookup fields, we are able to do uh, these cross object field updates for records on the task. But the one thing that's different, the one nuance that we need to take into consideration when we're doing it with tasks or events, is that that who ID and what ID, they're dynamic. So we need to just put a decision up front to figure out, okay, is this related to a lead looking at the object key prefix or a contact? And you just end up having as many decisions or outcomes for as many objects that you are interested in or want to take actions on. And then from there, it's fairly straightforward and you continue on like you would with anything else. For further reading, if you want to learn more about object key prefixes and what are they for various standard objects, definitely encourage you to check out these two articles. Um, but the easiest way may be to just navigate to the record of your choice, navigate to an opportunity, navigate to an account, and then in your URL just look for the three-letter prefix. And also, if you haven't already, definitely blaze your own automation trail on Trailhead. And there we go. That's all I have to share today. Any questions? Okay, we do have a few on here. Um, one from Martin. Can the task be associated with no who ID? If so, does that break the process? Good question. The task does not have to be related uh, to anything. The who ID and what ID could be blank. I would recommend you to um, make sure that your decision criteria are checking to see that the ID is perhaps is not blank. I think what I did is I checked to see if the ID starts with 003 or whatever. I think it would be okay even if it was blank, but in your testing if it wasn't, if I jump back over to Salesforce side. In the event that it blew up on us, then I would come over here and add another criteria to just say the who ID is null false, but I think it should work as is. But if not, we would just add another criteria to make sure it wasn't blank. Good question. All right, the next one is from Douglas. In the criteria diamonds, is it possible to check the who ID for lead slash contact without using the three digit prefix? That is also a good question. I am not aware of a way to determine if this is or is not related to a contact or what object is it related to without looking at that object key prefix. Now, if you didn't want to have your process builders with this criteria, you might do a formula field instead and encapsulate all that logic in one spot and perhaps your formula field just returns back the word lead or contact. And then here in your decision criteria, you would reference your custom formula field equals 
and then the value would be the word contact or the word lead, if you think that would be um, more intuitive for your team. All right. Uh, next question is from Kathleen. For the process builder example PowerPoint, you had evaluate instead of stop in the demo. Does that matter since the demo worked for both lead and contact examples? Great observation and good question. When I was making the screenshot, I had the intention that we would continue to build out more decision criteria to not only handle who the task is related to, but perhaps what the task is related to. And so that would need Process Builder to do an inspection on two different fields. Now, how we have the, this process set up at the moment, each of these decisions is looking at exactly one field, the who ID. And so it will either be related to a lead or related to a contact. So it's okay that if it was related to a lead, we come down this happy path and then we stop. Because if it's related to a lead, there is no way it would ever be related to a contact. Now, if I wanted to have one robust process and do actions for who it is and what it is, I would want to switch this to evaluate the next criteria. We're going to, let's go ahead and walk through that. We've got some time. Let's say we add another criteria. I'm done looking at who it's related to, but maybe I want to do actions for what it's related to. So is it completed for an account? And so here we would say, is it closed? Yes. But we're not going to look at the name field, the who ID. We're going to be looking at the related to field, which is the what ID. It's a different field and say, does it start with 001? We'll click Save, and we would do whatever we want to do with the account. But since the task could be related to a, um, not say a lead, but it might be related to a contact and an account, and in both scenarios, you want both actions to run, yes, we would need to change, instead of stopping, to be evaluate the next criteria. And that way, each decision would get evaluated in turn. Okay, So if we were related to a contact in an account, the first decision would say no. Second decision would say yes, let's update the contact. Oh, but let's keep going. Oh, it's also related to an account and do something there. Great question. Okay, the next question is from Mark. What's the advantage, if any, of using flow call from Process Builder rather than just implementing with Process Builder? That is also a fabulous question and one you should always ask yourself when you're building out your solutions. For this trivial of a solution, everything could be done in Process Builder. I don't see uh, any advantage over doing it here versus doing it in flow. Where I would start to see um, needing to go maybe flow versus process builder is what do you already have implemented and built out in your org if you already have a bunch of flows that you want to reuse it might make more sense to um, just have this process builder kind of like solution two just enough of a shell of a wrapper to get you over to flow perhaps you're not needing to do just a record update maybe you need to go and do a loop and maybe create a series of records. And so that you can do in flow, but you can't necessarily do that in process builder, you know, to do a loop and, and those sorts of actions. So I guess it really boils down to what other requirements do you have, needs that you may have, and then kind of layer in, should it only be process builder, should it be process builder and flow? I hope that answers the question. Okay, next question is from Parker. So you mentioned that Salesforce released a feature to be able to access the Who ID object in Process Builder. Is this, or do you think this will become available for the What ID object? And it is, it is. I didn't show it, but let's go ahead and show it here. So we'll go ahead and build out this example, completed the account, and we're gonna do update records. 
Now I've only seen this new feature to, to have the optimistic kind of choice. Was it a lead? Is the name a lead? Is the name ID a contact, and et cetera? Only in the update records. I didn't see it if you were trying to do actions or post a chatter, but <clears throat> but here it is. So when we choose the record type, the record related to the task, I can either say related to, and every object that it could be related to will show up here in the list. Okay. Now I don't have to type in related because if you had a hundred objects in your org, this may be a very long list. But if I knew I wanted to do account, I could just type in account, and there we see the related to account. Now the account field actually is pretty interesting to talk about here. Like why do we see three options here? That's because tasks have a standard field called the account ID. It's not necessarily a field that you um, update. Salesforce behind the scenes, this account ID field, behind the scenes is updated to be the same account if the task was related to a contact or if it was related to an opportunity, then the account that those records belong to the account ID uh, kind of infers from that, or if it is related to an account, then the account ID shows up there too. That's just more kind of behind the scenes fun stuff. But you could just pick the related to account field here. Um, and I don't know if I was explaining that completely clearly. See, the related to ID account this means that the related to, the what ID of the task is pointing to an account. This one, the just called account ID, the second option we see, it's an implied account ID. So if the task were actually related to an opportunity, the what ID is an opportunity, the account ID field would still be populated. Okay? but the related to would have been an opportunity. I hope that makes sense. So here we would just choose related to an account and then we'll see uh, fields that belong to our account. Good question and an awesome feature that got released on Wednesday. Okay and we just have one last question. Um, for those on the phone feel free to um, ask more. Um, in an org with person accounts, do you need to handle the who and the what ID? That is a great question. Unfortunately, I don't have a clue at this moment. Um, I would need to go try it out in an org with person accounts enabled. Um, if anyone has an org that's got person accounts enabled, I would love to jump in there and try it out. I don't think I have any available to me, um, but would have to follow up on that one. Sorry, not sure. Okay, so um, Bruce, why don't you post this out on the success community and then we'll um, follow up on it or someone in the community might jump in. Yeah, that would be great. Answer that. Okay, um, any other questions that might be related to Doug's presentation or just um, process builder flow, any automation tools? Going once, <laughs> going twice. <laughs> I'm not seeing any more questions come in. That's good. It was it was clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Doug, for being our first guest presenter. That's awesome. Um, so you. next week we have. Ben, and I believe Ben's actually on the call as well, so um, he'll be our next victim. <laughs> so um, after this call, um, sometime later today, we will be posting the deck that um, Doug just went through as well as the recording. Um, so we'll tweet it out, we'll um, post a link to it on um, salesforceautomationhour.com as well as the success community salesforce automation hour
And with that, we will talk to you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.